Hello YouTube. Um, apologies for not being able to get the video done, uh, video out and done last week or earlier this week even. Um, but lots of things have been coming up to uh, get in the way of my plans, so uh, I've had to battle with that. But uh, I'm here today out in the woods, um, very early in the morning. Um, it's probably coming up to about six o'clock. Um, probably more near a half five, I'd imagine. But, um, for the axe safety video uh, it's going to be a bit sort of quick and just a generalized thing um because none of the woods that i well most of the woods that i go to uh, are either closed for tree cutting or clearing or they, the roads are closed getting to them so i'm stuck with um just two woods at the moment to choose from and the sort of things i've got available to demonstrate sort of uh, axe safety are uh, pretty slim uh, like cutting like chopping blocks and uh, rounds of wood obviously I don't want to go out into a wood and start cutting trees up and branches up so uh, what I've done is I found a uh, an old rotten stump or uh, an old round like a sort of chopping block kind of looking thing um, that will do for demonstration purposes and I bought a couple of pieces of wood from my home to show you roughly again more demonstration purposes um lots of birds and animals about at the moment so uh, i'll just move this over there and where are we right now you'll be able to see this this is the rotten old stump here um, unfortunately it's not level it's when, it, when they felled it a uh, they sort of did a counter cut in it of some sort but uh, never mind that that will that will help um, or it'll do uh, right this is a, a bit tall for uh, big old crow this is a bit tall for cutting with or splitting with a hatchet such as this uh, you probably could get away with it but it's probably a little bit on the tall side um, ideally this is a sort of height you want if you're using a larger axe like a splitting axe or a, a Scandinavian forest axe something like that I mean this is a little bit longer than a small forest axe which is around about there somewhere but uh, this is really a felling axe so it's not the best tool to use for splitting um, because the, the head is fairly sort of narrow and uh, splitting axes you you want them to widen fast but uh, on to the safety side of things generally speaking with axes the longer the handle then the safer they are but uh, that can sort of can be true for bushcraft but it, it tends not to be um, the reason why it's safe to have a longer axe generally speaking is because when you're swinging to split timbers if you miss there's more chance of it hitting the ground than it than it is of hitting you if you've got a small hatchet like this and you're swinging away and you miss that's just going to hit you right into the kneecap or the thigh or somewhere else that's going to hurt a lot but uh, a longer handle axe means there's more chance of it hitting the ground or at least slowing down when it hits the ground or brush that's around you or the pieces of wood that you're splitting than, uh, than hitting yourself really. Um, you've got to try and imagine that this is a, a flat chopping block if you can. Uh, I'll turn it, turn it around that way. So that you can imagine this is completely flat and when you're cutting or when you're if you're splitting you want to have your piece that you're splitting at the back that way if you're swinging away and you miss the piece it's going to hit the block in front rather than because if you try and cut on the edge it'll miss the front and it'll come down and there's more chance of hitting you so you want to have your piece that you're splitting at the back and again, you don't, 
you want to make sure that there's no one around you uh, either side of you because the pieces of wood can and often do fly out sideways and no one behind you in case you do miss and it swings back and hits them and no one in front in case the, uh, the head comes off so you want to make sure you're nice and clear and also no branches overhead that's another good that's another bad one um, also you want to make sure you have a first aid kit with you uh, fairly well stocked first aid kit just in case because accidents do happen um, axes are very dangerous things so I try not to use them much if I can avoid it but uh, continuing as I said you want your piece of wood that you're splitting at the back of the uh, the stump that you're using as a rest and obviously this wants to be flat as well now as you probably noticed when I was because uh, this is a fairly small bit and I was holding it there um, I was just holding it with my hand to demonstrate but when if you've got a small piece like this or a piece that isn't sitting level like well it's not sitting level on this in this stump at all but if you've got a small piece or a piece that isn't sitting level you need to get yourself a small stick and hold that as you're splitting away and obviously that's not going to be very easy with a large axe or a, a longer axe but for a, a hatchet like this then that's, that's plenty to hold that while you hit it and that way it keeps your hands sort of well out of the way so if you miss it's going to hit that piece of wood rather than your fingers so obviously you don't want a short piece of uh, stick to hold it with and that stick has got a couple of names one of those names is a sissy stick but that makes it sound a bit sort of like you're doing something that's sort of laughable if you like but it's not it's a it's a very sensible way to, and a safe way to use it so i like to call that a steady stick instead of a sissy stick so uh, you can use that to hold hold the piece of wood or timber that you're splitting and then hit away at it and split it as I, as I, the, at the moment i'm only talking about splitting but i'll go on to the other bits a bit later on now for uh with the whether you're using the hatchet to split you want something that's a bit lower really uh, it's probably something more the same height as uh, this this piece at the front and you want to be set or back from the log a reasonable way again you you want this at the the back side of the log really but as i say this is step so i can't really show you so that if you miss it's going to hit there and uh, again you want to sit nice and far back kneeling down um, so that because obviously if you stood up and you miss it can come back and hit you in the leg but if you're kneeling down and you miss it's going to go into the ground if it if it doesn't hit the the log so you can get that right there and you get a nice sort of uh, steady cut as well when you're when you're splitting you want to take a few sort of swings at it not at full speed but pretty fast as well because as you're as you speed up you can your hand can sort of change direction a little bit so you want to get it sort of used to the idea of where it's where it's going to be landing and then hit it because if you catch it on the side it can flick the the axe head off to the side like so or that way depends how you hit it and uh, all of those things because they're unexpected they can be dangerous um, and cause you to react in different ways to what you, you're expecting <coughs> so that's that's splitting um, it, you need to use a block of some sort or a stump that's in the ground that's been cut off uh, it's no good trying to sit pieces on the, the ground even holding them with your with your stick it's no good doing that because the ground is generally soft and if it's not soft it's going to have stones in it or something that are going to damage your axe head the cutting edge of your axe as you're chopping away and miss because or when you get right down to the bottom of it because it is going to happen so you need to be on a, on a wooden sort of nice solid wooden 
block of some kind just to, to give it some sort of resistance when you hit it and something that's not going to damage the axe head if you miss and hit hit the thing it's sat on this sorry i'm being a bit confusing but uh, that's <coughs> that's that anyway the uh the splitting side of things um carving because a lot of people do tend to use axes for carving and they use smaller axes um not not normally combi axes like this one but generally smaller axes and uh, when you're doing the, a lot of the roughing out with the carving you need to make sure that the hand holding the piece of wood because obviously um using trying to use your sissy stick can can be a bit awkward so and because you're not splitting it straight into the middle you can actually hold it at the top but you want to hold it with most of your hand obviously on the opposite side of this and your thumb on that side as well so that if you do somehow come up to the top there's a, a lot less chance of hitting your thumb or anything but ideally you don't want to come up anywhere near you want to sort of draw it up to there and sort of chop downwards so you're not coming up like that you want to go stay down there below where your hand is holding it so that if you miss it's not going to hit your wrist it's all like this then you can sort of get it to sort of work your way around it do your roughing out and uh, keep it that way again that's something that's not very well suited to the larger axes this is why bushcraft axes or the most common used commonly used axe in bushcraft is probably the hatchet despite the great popularity of the small forest axe the hatchet is the the most useful and most widely used i believe of bushcraft axes in the uk that is maybe not in uh, scandinavia or um, canada or alaska or other places like that where there's lots and lots of woodland and you can quite often freely cut down trees and things like that but here in the uk because we're a bit more restricted on the woodland you you tend not to use larger axes so much so you're sticking to the smaller ones like carving axes and hatchets um, also while you're carving as i was going to say you can choke right up onto the axe like this and use it as a knife a kind of knife to sort of scrape obviously you need a nice sharp axe which this one isn't particularly sharp at the moment plus this is very dry wood that i've bought from my house so uh, that one again and again when you're carving you want to hold it nice and far away from where you're cutting you don't want to sort of try and use it like this because you can slip and catch your thumb or your fingertips or whatever so hold it nice and far back again with something nice and solid to rest the end on as you're cutting so you can work away at it um uh, sorry to jump around a bit but uh, back to the splitting you can there are ways of splitting side on like that but they're they're probably better suited to when you've got when you haven't got a stump around you've got sort of like a fallen tree or something like that and you can hit them that way because if you're if you imagine a fallen tree is a large version of this branch it's a lot easier to try and hit something on the side than it is to try and balance something on it but uh, generally this this method of splitting isn't as effective as the end on version because it's, there's a lot more chance of it rolling and the, the blade sort of slipping off the side um, generally speaking you'll be using it on a sort of a long as I say a long fallen branch or a long fallen trunk something like that so if it does roll off the side it's going to hit the uh, the tree or the branch um, sometimes if you've got a lot of work to cut with uh, with your small axe a lot, a lot of splitting work rather it's useful to have a sort of a longish piece of log or whatever in front of you as well so that if you if it does miss the block you're using and it does come back without hitting the ground you've got the log 
you want a biggish log, about six inches diameter at least, to uh, act as, a, as an emergency stop. So you've got as many levels of protection as you can before you uh, start injuring yourself. Um, I think that's pretty much covered the splitting and the carving. There's obviously, I, I'm not a big wood carver, so I'm not, I'm probably not, not going to sort of know the uh, the intricate little ins and outs of carving with axes but uh, that's the basics that I've showed you earlier um, now when you're delimbing a tree so you've got a fallen tree and you've got uh, pretend this is the fallen tree for now and you've got branches sort of growing out of it like that you want to stand on the opposite side to the branch you're trying to cut off. Uh, so I don't know if you can see that there. And uh, use the axe as a cutting motion into the sort of the V groove, not from that side of it, because it will slide. The chances are it will hit and slide off. But in the V, you it will bite in and help cut it off and as, as I say you want to be on the opposite side so if it does miss somehow it's going to hit the tree between you and the, the branch or delimbing or the limb you're taking off um, I think that's pretty much all I all I have to say now I've had the uh, the basic axes limbing uh, I don't want to get into the felling side of axes because that's uh, something that's not really encouraged in the UK um but limbing of sort of deadfall and windfall trees are probably acceptable again you you need to be in in a piece of uh, woodland where you have the owner's permission before you can cut or chop any wood or or burn any wood so uh obviously it's up to you, up to the landowners or if you uh, if you're lucky enough to look on your own land then that's fair enough but uh, it's up to the, the landowners how they they want you to process the wood. I mean, they chances are they'll have a chainsaw and they'll cut up rounds for you, ready to split. Um, general bushcrafting, though, the chances of having anything bigger than that to split is very slim. Um, that sort of thing you can process with your folding saw and uh, chop with a, uh, a hatchet. I mean, that's anything most things smaller than that you could probably get away with if you're using it for for your fire as fuel for your fire then uh, anything smaller than that you'll get away with just burning it as is you probably get away with burning that as well if you've got a largish fire but uh, for most wild camping and stealth camping and that that's the biggest thing you're going to need an axe for if you want a, a small fire and split it up for for kindling and whatnot so uh, as i say that's my my ideas are the the best bushcraft axe is the, the small hatchet. It's probably not the best axe for splitting because, as I say, it's quite a narrow head, same as the felling axe. But it's it will do most jobs for you, and you're not going to need it to split large things at all because you're because of the nature of what you're in the woods anyway. So. Uh, that's uh, that's pretty much it. So, uh, hope sorry that's been really confusing and uh, 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 sort of maybe not fully. Uh, uh, I can't remember the words now. Uh, didn't follow on in the right order, I suppose. But uh, hopefully that's uh, given you a few ideas of safety of uh, how to cut it's probably worth watching this video through a few times just so you can make sense of what i'm saying because i'm i'm uh, i'm not on uh, top form at the moment but uh as i say that's that's the uh, the safety side of axes that i was going to say um and uh hopefully that helps you while you're in the woods next time or uh next time you're using an axe whether it be in the woods or in your garden or something like that Okay, thanks for watching.